You know when you watch all these TV shows online and they talk about OCD? Most of them get it incorrect. There is one show that just introduced a new character named Joni in the show The Good Doctor. They got it correct. This person has what's called magical thinking OCD. We're gonna go through a few clips from this show and I'm gonna tell you what magical thinking OCD is and actually how we do the treatment. So here we go. My name is Joni DeGroot. Um, I'm curious about cancer patients whose exposure came from formaldehyde in pressed wood office furniture. Have you had a case like that? No, nor have I read about that. If you have a case where that is alleged, I would not be a good consultant. It's not for a case. It's Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so first real quick, I've worked with OCD for so long and sometimes it's hard to understand why or what the motivation is for somebody asking certain questions. What I can tell from this specific clip is that she's asking this question not just to gain this information, just to know for a possible case. She is asking for reassurance and the doctor doesn't necessarily know this just yet. It's pretty normal and natural for individuals just to ask a general question. And we're gonna answer it because that's what we do as humans. But in their brain, they're wanting a specific like, yes, if they have heard of that case, it is possible for me to contract that disease or whatever it is. So just a simple, hey, ask a doctor a question, not that big of a deal. But that's not where the magical thinking comes in. Here we go. So somebody with magical thinking OCD will often tap certain items. They'll do something because their brain says, you got to do it or else something bad is going to happen. Sometimes it's very specific. It's my mom that is going to die. It's me that's going to get in a car crash. Maybe I'll never go to college. Whatever the worry or fear is in the moment, they just got to do it. The brain says, tap this three times, tap this. Here's your routine. This is what you do. Here's your ritual every single time. Because if you don't, it is not worth the risk. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if there's no logic to it, that's how it is. You stole your boss's client. Like all those people. The so there we go again. Super, super common for individuals to have different routines that they have when they get home. So I go home, take off all my clothes, throw them in the hamper. Sometimes people might shower. And it's sometimes not even necessarily a contamination type of thing. It's just, that's what I do because it's part of the magical thinking. I follow my patterns exactly. I'm assuming the pictures right there is her family. I got to tap before every single picture or else something bad is going to happen to this specific person. Looking at you, watching while you do that. I am practicing exposure to contaminants and noises. I can adapt, I can hide it. Good. So exposure and response prevention, that is the treatment we want to do for something like this. And typically what it looks like is instead of it just us saying, hey, don't tap and then let's just deal with it. It's kind of like that, but what we're really doing is we're going to not tap and we're gonna respond completely different to it. So our job is to say, I know you wanna go tap in front of that picture. I know you wanna do it. Let's just sit here on the couch and let's look at that picture and in the brain, whatever the threat comes your way, we're saying, sure, maybe, it could be, I don't know, definitely possible. Yeah, anything's possible. I don't know the future. Maybe I'll never know for sure. Maybe, maybe not. There's the magic words right there. I always point the wrong way, but whoa, there it is. Maybe, maybe not. We are risking and the anxiety, the fear is so strong. It says, this is important. This is important. This is important. You got to do it. Don't worry. It's not worth the risk. It only takes five seconds. Just tap. We're willing to risk it. And then we see what happens. Did something bad happen? Did it not? But we are never 100% sure that something bad is not going to happen. That's the trick of all this, is that your job is just to live life. So I might have someone come in my office, we write down all the things that they do. I tap the picture, I do this, I straighten books, I do this. Sometimes it is completely random. They don't even know. Today I was half tapping my cup because that's what it told me, but yesterday I was flicking the light switch. It is completely random sometimes. Sometimes there's a specific ritual, but we're gonna write down all of those things and then we're going to slowly start eliminating them. We do this in a slow manner. Some people choose to do all of it. I'm just not going to do any of it. We might write down on a piece of paper. Yep. Something bad may or may not happen. Something bad may or may not happen. The anxiety is going to rise and it's going to fall all on its own without us having to fix it or correct it or change it. And it gets easier over time. 
She's smart, and because of her OCD, she is very thorough and understands my situation. OCD. So I thought this part was important because most people think OCD is all about cleanliness and people are just really good at organizing, but that's not always the case. This is the one part that I'm like, eh, e, ooh, I don't know. Not everybody with OCD is like that. Everyone's theme and fear is different, but he redeems himself. Here we go. She's really neat and organized? No, that is not OCD. She has repetitive intrusive thoughts that cause excessive anxiety, which she manages with ritual behavior. There we go. Yeah, everyone is different. Lots of rituals, lots of men mental thinking, fears, worries that come their way. Joni, your tapping so is distracting Dr. Park. I'm okay. So a lot of people can't function Tap three times until they do it. Bad things will happen. Tap three times or bad things will happen. Tap three times or bad things will happen. Tap three times or bad things will happen. Joni. Many individuals will tell me, I feel this way. Like, it's almost like tunnel vision. I have to, the only option I have right now is to tap this thing, to do this thing. Like, the world gets shut out until I do it and it's not that big of a deal, I can just do it. But as you see in this moment, sometimes it really just kind of takes over the moment. They're tapping, they don't even realize they're tapping because that's just what they do. Sometimes it helps them think. I'm sure you have more questions for Dr. Park. So a lot of individuals will hide these compulsions as well. Do them uh, underneath the table, make sure no one's watching. Some people can control it completely while they're at work. Others can't. Everyone's different. Which is our testimony. One of our witnesses is going to testify that our client screwed up. His view of the accident is almost exactly what their expert. What are you doing? I'll talk to Dr. Park and counsel no, him. No, I mean to my books. I straighten one or two. So great example. This was probably not a routine that she does every single day, but she saw it and the brain just said, do it. You got to straighten it. And it's not to be, you know, clean or organized. It's because the brain said, do it. And so we follow it. Brain says, do it. You follow it. Why else would you not? Because it's not worth the risk. Don't do it. Don't not risk this thing. Listen to me. Taking this case to trial with that client and you. Fixes or bad things will happen. You cannot win a case if the jury doesn't like you. If you make them uncomfortable. Fix this or bad things will happen. Fix this or bad things will happen. Fix this. Yeah, there's that tunnel vision. Fix this or bad things will happen. I always feel so bad for, for individuals who are just are so overwhelmed with this that like we can say so easily, just stop doing it, but it's not that simple. Definitely not that simple. And when somebody stops somebody from doing a ritual or a compulsion, it's like tunnel vision to the max. Like it actually makes it worse. So for parents helping their loved ones with something like this, it's hard because we are like, we wanna stop the compulsion. We wanna take the books away. We wanna, you know, stop tapping, grab their arms, whatever it is, but it's just gonna make it worse. So hopefully with a treatment <laughs> provider, you're able to come up with a plan to say, hey, parents, this is your job. When you see me tapping, maybe you do hold my hand. Maybe you do say maybe, maybe not. That's when it's built into the actual treatment plan. Maybe any construction, which implies that the legislature. Two more squeaks. Two more squeaks. Two more squeaks. Two more squeaks. So for her, what I'm noticing is she does things in threes. Each person will do something different. Sometimes it's a different number. Sometimes it's just certain sounds that their their brain listens to. But for her, unprovoked, this is just something that happened. She's right in the middle of work. Dang it, one squeak happened. Her brain's gotta finish it, it's gotta complete it. There's that, if you don't complete it, what's gonna happen? You just stopped? So much interference in somebody's life. So many people are good at hiding this from others, but at the same time, when they get home, it's like, Ooh, volcano happens, I gotta do all the tapping that I missed throughout the day. It's just not worth the risk. And sometimes that risk can change. I'm not gonna do well on this case if I don't tap a certain way. My parent is gonna die if I don't do this. I'll never get in a relationship. But it's not just like a thought, it's anxiety, it's fear, it's like that flame inside, it's dangerous. 
This is important. You follow it. You have to follow it. So with this magical thinking OCD, we do that exposure and response prevention. We slowly reduce the compulsions, all the things somebody's tapping, we reduce the rumination that's happening, which is the problem solving, thinking through it. Is this true? Is it not true? We don't even use logic. We're not saying this is ridiculous. This would never happen. Nothing's gonna happen. We don't do that. Instead, we say, we are accepting reality. We have no idea, but guess what? Sometimes things do happen and we try not to make a connection with it. So if my brain said, I'm gonna fall flat on my face if I don't tap this three times and I choose not to tap it, and guess what? Maybe I do fall flat on my face. I'm not gonna say, aha, it's because I didn't tap. We actually are just accepting life for being life. Maybe it has nothing to do with anything. Individuals are often really hyper aware of the catastrophes because their brain says this is going to happen. So they're sometimes looking for it and they're stuck in their brain thinking, thinking, thinking. Ooh, this is a tough thing. I created another video here on magical thinking OCD that helps you go through that treatment a little bit more. Go watch that right now. But what did you think of this episode? Do you feel like they got OCD correctly? And do you struggle with magical thinking OCD? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.